Back in the day, the mata still wears daiko, or shorts. It's an analogy the older generation uses when one reminisces about the changes we are seeing now as compared to the memories of the past. The times have changed. One just can't simply invoke the past to make sense of reality today. The protagonist here is the mata. Who and what is the mata? The name Mata Mata is coined to describe policemen as they are all eyes and ears and watching. Mata is a Malay term meaning eyes and watchmen. Distinguished by the uniform influenced by British colonial times, the Mata sports a grey flannel shirt, khaki shorts and a black beret. Singapore's first police force was established in 1820 and the first police station was built on the banks of Singapore River in 1823. This police station, even though it's small, has a basement room for prisoners. With two sampans, a 15-man force, the Marine Police was headquartered at Kavanagh Bridge in 1824 to combat the rise of piracy near Singapore's harbour. The British later merged Singapore with Penang and Malacca to form the Strait Settlements Police Force in 1826 and disbanded it in 1946. In the same year when Singapore was established as a British colony in 1867, the Central Police Station building was built in Southbridge Road for the Straits Sediments Police Force. The location was chosen due to the secret societies and triads that plagued Chinatown during that time. Perhaps the most interesting police station built in the 1930s was a detective headquarters at Robinson Road. Dubbed at Singapore's Scotland Yard, the detective headquarters set up different departments to study criminal stats, photography, fingerprints and even analysis of bullets and cartridges. Officers specialise in different Chinese dialects like Hokkien, Cantonese or Hakka or Teochew were recruited to combat crimes committed by Chinese secret societies and triads. The information collected were used to monitor illegal activities such as commercial crimes, prostitution and gambling. The Singapore Police Force have experienced extensive growth, from establishing the first police radio division with its emergency hotline number 999 in 1948, to maintaining a fleet of 60 dispatch cars in the mid 1950s, they have come a long way. The period 1949 to 1950 was a significant year for the Singapore Police Force. The Singapore Police founded the first batch of Gurkha contingent in 1949, April. It's proved to be a crucial move as the disciplined and very loyal Gurkhas maintained a neutral stand during the racial riots. Women were also allowed to enlist. After months of training, the first batch of 10 police women was signed on in January 1950. During that time, one of the trainees, Mary Quintal, went on to become the first female assistant superintendent of the police in 1961. As Singapore marched towards its self-governance in 1965, the police force also received a new name. The Sing Singapore Police was renamed as Police Nagara Singapura in December 1959, represented by a new coat of arms with a crescent moon and five stars. The year 1969 was a significant year for Singapore and its police force. It was the 150th anniversary of the founding of modern Singapore, the Singapore Police Force, already 6,000 strong by then, received a brand new design in their uniforms. Finally, a stark contrast as compared to the former colonial ones, the new Dacron blue uniforms completed with long sleeve shirts, trousers and peak caps would play an important role in helping the policemen maintain a professional look. The material used for new uniforms were also well suited in a tropical climate, a far cry from the flannel and shorts get up when they first started. Times have changed and so has the uniforms, but the core mission of the police remains the same, to protect lives and keep people safe. Celebrating 200 years of service in this small country, little island called Singapore.